please don't do that. There isn't any reason to have a laser pointer. It's, it's like everything else that you do. You really need to focus on what it is that you're doing and to integrate the entire thing. They trail and always and know that the bottom is coming to greet the top, not the top going down. Okay. Okay, the dead, let, we got the pitch, so let's just start there at the, at the, at the, at the beginning of the bar. Wah! What we'd like to do then is move ahead and set a goal about where you would like to go with this. Um, and we would imagine that would include some interventions around um, these maintaining reinforcements. So this notation, right, when we have L of I, right, and then a bunch of cities here, which are going to be intermediate hops, this means the length or the shortest path from I to 1 going through the rest of the cities. Tell me what to do. Feet. Don't show me. The Shoulders over feet. I want you to tell me what my feet look like. What are my feet? Knees slightly bent. Knees slightly bent. Arms out. Arms out where? Palms up. 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 Just go through, and you have to tighten up this answer because remember, it's not going to be three paragraphs. It's got to be about four sentences, four or five sentences. I think we could categorize it as a love-hate relationship. At different times, different elements were more strongly stressed than others. Uh, but at all times, it was underpinned by a certain ambiguity and ambivalence. What you're going to have to know, when you look at each enzyme, you must know what it breaks down. It's either going to break down carbs, starches, proteins, or fats, okay? So, what type of digestion begins in the mouth? Carbohydrate digestion. I nominated Edith Tidwell for faculty favorite, and she teaches private voice lessons. She is far and above my favorite professor. She goes to bat for me all the time and there's never any question that uh, she has my best interest at heart. Dr. Adrian Bratcher and the reason why I nominated her was because uh, she's a lot of fun and she cares about what she teaches. And I was going through a personal crisis in my life and she worked with me and walked me through. And I appreciate that, and she really cared. I nominated Blake Beatty for Faculty Favorites. Um, I actually took the Black Death course. It was a history seminar. Um, he's one of the medieval, or medieval and Renaissance studies professors here. Um, very few people are that interested in the medieval period, but um, Dr. Beatty absolutely loves it, and everybody who has his class knows that he loves it. I nominated Charles Zimmerman and he teaches the Communications 111 course. He, he really, really wants his students to succeed and he's the only professor that I've ever had that is right off the bat giving me a comprehensive answer on why I need his class. I've never had a professor do that to me before. Mary Zakowski Ashlock and she teaches Communications 201 which is Introduction to Communications. I was just very impressed because she had 200 students when I was her student my fall 2009 semester and she knew every student by name and she could always pick them out of the class and involve every student. I nominated Dr. Nancy Cunningham as my faculty favorite. Uh, she was my professor in three classes, one of which was consultation, uh, one of which was theories of counseling and psychotherapy and the other one was theories and techniques in counseling. Uh, not only is she a brilliant and gifted teacher, she really shows that her students are special to her. The professor that I nominated was Dr. Olfa Nastroy. Uh, she teaches web mining and combinatorial optimization. She is also my PhD advisor. I nominated her because I believe she deserves it. Uh, uh, she has a very unique teaching style and a very unique 
way of encouraging students to learn the subject and do research about it. For my favorite faculty member, I nominated Stephanie Wooten Burnett of the Health and Physical Education Department. She can lead by example. She's been in the position that I and my other classmates are in, and she has taken the steps that I'm taking to be successful, so I felt that what she's doing and all the hard work she has put in to her career is going to benefit all the members of the education department. Who I nominated was uh, Timothy Owens. My faculty favorite is Timo, Timothy Owens, of course. His teaching methodology uh, just really uh, uh, appealed to me. Uh, it's just the way he, he teaches his classes. Uh, you could see the passion that he puts into it. He's just a really, uh, just a really warm, caring kind of guy, and he wants his students to excel. He helps each student to realize their potential. He has a way of dissecting all of us and figuring out what skill level we are at, and then he rolls up his sleeves and then pulls us along and brings us up to the best of our abilities. I was the first person in my family to go to college and I didn't understand how the system worked. We had no clue what went on outside of the classroom. I was afraid to go see professors. I didn't even know there was a dean in the college whose job was to get us into law school or medical school until I was a junior. I was nominated for some scholarship and I had no idea that I'd been nominated and no idea what the scholarship did. I was just a naive kid. I eventually got street smart and savvy about college, but it took a while. He knows me by my first name, always calls me by my first name. Uh, and he does that with, you know, 30 people a class and he's got, you know, maybe six or seven classes. So, and he, he knows everybody. I was thinking about the students I teach. And it caused me to remember who I was when I was 17 years old and the situation in which many of them obviously find themselves first-time students. People don't exactly know that you can go have coffee with a professor or what resources are available for counseling and guidance or, or even how you select a dorm room. And that has infused my teaching because whenever I, I begin to, to get frustrated with them, I remember that I was once 17 years old and I too was unsophisticated and naive and I try to put myself in, in their place. Those are the moments I think make me a, a better teacher. These moments happen with me um, pretty much on a daily basis. I do one-on-one -on -one teaching and if you're trying to get a student to understand voice singing in itself is a, it's not so tangible. You talk technically, but you also talk in terms of uh, visualization. So when it does reach that a student feels and understands and can process it, and then their voice is enhanced by that. She coaches me all the time, and she helps me with, with vocal problems as well as personal problems. And um, I see her as more of uh, more than just a vocal mentor, but also um, a personal friend and just a wonderful person all around. She cares about all of her students. She never plays any kind of favorites. She, um, I've always said that if the walls could sing, she would teach the walls. In singing, your body is your instrument, and so it's pretty personal. You have to be able to talk to that person and, and encourage that person so they can feel comfortable with their instrument but yet help refine it. It's a really a personal thing. Every day I go into the classroom and think, all right, here's what I have planned and then based upon what students end up doing in exercises or what they say, it just really comes across as, my gosh, they really listen to what I taught them and then they have something else to bring in. She really made the material come alive the way that she would use the students in her class and bring them up in the front even though they would be sitting in the back. You know, those are the students who don't want to get involved. And the fact that she was able to bring them up there and, you know, make everybody laugh and make everybody really enjoy a class was just an amazing experience for me and I'm sure for everybody else as well. Especially since the class was at 9 a.m and everybody's just kind of asleep. It was just a very big, she would come in every day with like a huge smile 
and you're just like, wow, okay, wake up time. Whether or not I'm teaching public speaking or another class, we do presentations. And there are many people who come to me individually and say I have great anxiety, and we certainly have assessments for that where we know oftentimes, and they'll say I can't do this, I've saved this class for my last semester as a senior, and then by the end of the semester, the aha moment then becomes, thank you so much. Because of you, I have made it through this class and I didn't think I could do it. And I think, oh. I, and I, and, but then I am just as excited as they are. I try to go to every May uh, graduation um, in the spring. And usually I meet some of my students' parents. And that's kind of, when they say thank you to me, that means they're actually going home. They're internalizing what I've taught them. They think I'm doing a good job, and they go home and tell their parents about it. That means a lot to me. Stephanie is a very down-to-earth person, and as, a, as an educator, she always made herself readily available no matter what. It's always going to be a learning process, and Stephanie has instilled that in all of her students. She has gone through all the steps that I'm going through in order to become a teacher. I, I think I just talked to them. I talk to them like they're normal human beings. If they have a question, I answer it. They email me, I get right back to them. I treat them with respect. I treat them just the way I would treat anybody because they are more important than any of us that's here because they're the ones who are going to be going out into the world, changing the world. Um, so I just talk to them like they're wonderful, which they are in my opinion. A student last summer said to me in my class, you make coming to class and learning fun. And I thought, well, that's a wonderful thing because it, it, it means they're engaged and they're engaged in a way that they find pleasurable, but they're still learning. I think that she impacted my learning because she was able to communicate with me on my level. Uh, she isn't afraid to show herself as a real person. I take it very seriously. I always work at what I do. I teach a group of courses, but I teach them often. Uh, and I always think, well, you know, I'll just do what I did last semester. And then when I look at my stuff, I think, no, well, I'll change it here or change it there, or I think of a new idea. I like things to be um, interesting to the students and engaging to them, so I try to do a variety of things. I read my evaluations about after the third semester. And I started reading them and they're just like, Dr. B, you're great. Dr. B this and Dr. B that. And, and I asked them questions. I went to class like the next semester and I asked them, what is it about this class that you like? What is it that you didn't like? And I almost got emotional because everyone said to me, we just love the fact that you come in and you talk to us. You don't talk above us. She's subject to say anything. She was mentioning uh, about the athlete's foot and about how if urination on the foot will cure athlete's foot. The class was rolling and, and she kind of hooked us uh, with stuff like that and we felt comfortable and, and we were able to ask questions. The, even the most bizarre questions uh, was welcome and she didn't make you feel stupid. And then I had a student that it, he didn't say anything during class. But he came in to my office. He said, you know, when you asked us about this, I really wanted to tell you what you did for me that semester. He told me he had a lot of deaths in his family. He said, you were understanding, and you made sure I learned the material. And he said, if it wasn't for you, I don't think I could have made it that semester. He lost three family members that month. He said, I came to your class just to be happy. And I figured that, to me, it's not all about just teaching them. It's a part of life. You know, I'm a part of their daily walk, is what I figured out. That was a very good experience for me because I said, I really do something well. And I really do mean something to them. It was very emotional for me because I felt like, especially someone my age, to think that I've impacted them that much. Well, it's gonna sound kind of funny, but one of the most gratifying comments I get, and I'll, I'll get this at various points, especially in the big introductory survey classes uh, that the students have to take. Very few of them are there because they wanna be. They're there for a gen ed requirement. They are the quintessential captive audience. And I love it when you get to the end of the semester and some student will come up, and it's usually not a great student, 
will come up and say something along the lines of, you know, I thought this class was really going to suck, and it didn't. In, in a way, that tells me more than anything else that, that I've done my job. You know, I don't know that I've ever had another faculty member at UofL who's been quite as vibrant about the subject matter that they've been teaching. Um, he is just so excited in class. He would always be prepared. He always had what he needed for class. Dr. Beatty, he's on top of things. He's making sure that he's got everything he needs for class and, you know, the students learn. If I can get these other students, um, the gen ed students, who've never thought of themselves as having any kind of interest in history in the past, uh, to develop some kind of appreciation for history and come out of the class with their minds maybe slightly changed about it, at, at least acquired some sense of how it works, of, of how historical processes move, how historical forces operate, and why these things that happened 500, 1,000, 2,000 years ago still touch on their lives and still have relevance and continue to inform uh, the historical movement of the present day. I teach a very abstract kind of science, uh, computer engineering, computer science, which is between engineering and mathematics and math, you know, and statistics. And so a lot of uh, my job is actually teaching with equations. She's my advisor and I may say that she is my family here. I'm from Turkey and she calls her students as her kids. She's our family here too. She always tries to encourage and support us whenever she can and she's with us even at 3 a.m., 4 a.m. in the morning if I call her. One of the, the stories that really affected me and gave me really positive and encouraging feedback was from a freshman student that I taught uh, when I used to teach math. She was struggling at first, and I did, you know, give her the effort and the time, and, you know, as well as many other students. But uh, this student, about uh, seven years later, I happened to meet with one of my classmates. She found out that, you know, he knew who I was, and so she had to find a way to communicate with me, and she ended up writing on a small post-it note. Dear uh, Olfa, thank you so much for being such a great teacher. You have uh, actually succeeded to make me interested in math. You made me understand the equations in a way that nobody else has. And I think that really spoke to me in a, just in a magical way. I was like, am I waking you up? And she would be, uh, not really, what is it? And I'm like, can you please like read this section of the paper that I'm supposed to submit at 6 a.m. in the morning? And she would read it and like send me the comments and um, she would be with us whenever we needed her. I always enjoy learning. I've had the love of learning. And my strength is I like to teach. I love to teach. And I believe that if I, if you love what you do, and my love of teaching will then impact the students and allow them to then have a love of learning. You taught me how to advocate for not only myself, by watching how you advocated for yourself through your career and making sure that us students were never taken advantage of. He's also helped uh, me understand uh, me as a person as a result of what I'm learning in his classes. Uh, a good example would be that, you know, learning about the deaf culture uh, and learning about uh, uh, myself specifically because uh, I'm hard of hearing and learning more about that, I'm learning my new identity. So by watching you, now that I'm an interpreter, I know how to advocate for other deaf within the community. So I feel like because I like to teach, I'm more motivated because of my love of teaching to find new ways to teach. And I don't like to teach within a box. I like to be open to new things and find different strategies and see what works with students and what doesn't work with students. I'm always changing and adapting to make things better and to grow. I love to see the students smile and enjoy their class. I love to see the students' eyes light up whenever you see that they have learned the concept that you're teaching them. Dr. Beatty, I'd like to thank you just for being an awesome professor, for helping me to get into medieval studies even more, and um, just for being a good mentor and professor to so many students that are out there. Um, I know that you've been an inspiration to a lot of students on campus, and UofL definitely benefits from having you as a professor here. 
thanks for giving me the, the tools and the, uh, the knowledge I need to be a successful speaker and uh, a successful student because my, my other papers in like my English class and my Spanish class have improved just from having Professor Ziaz as my professor for my communications. When I came here as an incoming freshman, I was told that during my orientation that I would not be able to find a professor who actually cared about me, that this was all on me, and I had all this pressure on me. And then when I came into your class, I was extremely surprised at just the way that you cared about your students and the way that you interacted with us every day. Keep up the good work and thank you. I passed your class and I didn't think I would. Stephanie, thank you so much for everything you've done for myself. I could not be more gracious for everything you've done with Kayford and the, all the extra hours in your office. You have been a complete advocate in everything that I'm going to aspire to be. I just wanted to say thank you for being the wonderful person that you are and you have uh, taught me more about myself than anyone could ever hope to and you've given me uh, the, the courage and the inspiration to keep doing what I need to do so that I could share what you have freely so shared with me. And I thank you for that and I really appreciate that, Timo. Dr. Nasroi, I would like to thank you for everything that you have done so far and everything that you're going to do in the future too. Um, you are an amazing person and we appreciate that you are always supportive to us and you always give us energy whenever we needed it. And we appreciate that you're smart, you're intelligent, you're very really hardworking and you have a very huge, nice heart. Thank you for everything. Dr. Cunningham, I really thank you. and the depth of which is shown here in this videotape. <laughs> to get me to appear on video, uh, videotape means, I think, a great deal of you. So thank you for everything you've done. And if I could tell you one thing, I would have to let you know that it's impossible to extend my gratitude to you. It's because of you, you have helped me when I thought that I couldn't graduate as I was a part-time student, a new mom with a family and all. And you would say, that's no excuse. You can graduate. So thank you for your help and helping me to realize my dream to become successful. Much love to you, Timo. There are really no words that can express how grateful I am to you. And I love you so much. And I would not change our experience here for the world.